In this episode of Mind Pump, your favorite fitness, health, and education uh, and entertainment podcast. Don't lie, it's your favorite. Uh, we answer fitness and health questions asked by listeners like you. Um, and in the beginning of the episode, we do our introductory portion where we talk about current events. We mention studies. Sometimes we mention our sponsors. So I'm going to give you a breakdown of what happened in today's Mind Pump podcast. We started by talking about occlusion training. This is a training technique uses lightweight uh, that actually builds a decent amount of muscle. Um, it's also known as blood flow uh, restrictive training. So you might want to look that up. It's pretty cool. Then we talked about how you should go back to the gym when your gym reopens. And most of you should probably go easier than you think. A lot of you are probably going to overdo it uh, the first week you're in the yeah, gym. chill out. Then we talk about all the black markets that are probably going to pop up because of all this uh, shelter at, ho at home stuff uh, that you know a lot of our states and cities are telling us like and not the kind of black markets you're used to like I'm talking about black markets for like cutting your hair mm. interesting speculations then we talked about the top fetishes in each state this <laughs> is where it got weird this it got pretty weird here yeah. then Justin brought up a show on YouTube called uh, what we do in the shadows uh, we talked about the Hilarious. curse of knowledge um, and then we talked about hallucinations um, oh, by the way, we have a free class this Saturday. It's a webinar. Justin's going to teach you how to self-assess your body. Come on, let's come hang out. And how to prime your body before your workouts. It's a free Again, it's a total class. He teaches you. He uses Doug as a student in the class. It's really, really fun. Um, and the, when the webinars are going on live, we will be on there live answering questions. It's unlimited. It's free. Sign up at mapsprimewebinar.com. Then we got into the fitness questions. The first question, this person wants to know how to lose fat without losing muscle. This is a great question because mm -hmm. studies show that when people burn body fat through diet, they often lose just as much muscle. So how do we stop that? The next question, this person is looking for a second source of income, wants to do nutrition coaching online, and wants to know what online programs we recommend. Now, our favorite online certification course for nutrition is NCI certifications. We love them, we work with them, and we actually have something for you. Here's what you do. Go to ncicertifications.com forward slash mind pump, and you'll get a copy of Nutrition Coaching Secrets audiobook for only $1.99. Go check that out. The next question, this person understands the difference between flexibility and mobility. So what do flexibility and mobility drills look like? What makes them different? Mm. And the next question, uh, when taking a protein shake before bed, should I try casein? I heard, I heard casein, it has slower digestion. It's better for before sleep. Is it better than whey protein? Also, this month, all month long, one of our best at-home workout programs, MAPS Starter, is 50% off. This is a great program to get you back into working out. It's a great program for new people. It's a great program if you're advanced and you'd like to revisit mm. good form, stability, and control. All you need to follow this program is a stability ball, and dumbbells. That's it. And you can do the whole workout. Uh, here's how you get the 50% off discount. Go to mapsstarter.com. That's M-A-P-S-S-T-A-R-T-E-R.com and use the code STARTER50. That's S-T-A-R-T-E-R-5-0, -E no space, for the discount. How come you guys didn't say anything? About what? Uh. Your, hair, your haircut? You haven't, come on, bro. Lack of haircut. <laughs> what haircut? <laughs> yeah. It's getting pretty bad. Jessica had a conversation with me about it last night. Oh, she, you had a talk, huh? Yeah, no, yeah. She, she call you Wolfman now or what? She's just like, oh. she's like, we have to do something. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Dan. I mean, I, I imagine she could cut it for you. She can't be that I told her to do she that. She can't be that much worse than Supercuts. She didn't want to. Yeah. Bro, listen, my lady at... <laughs> My lady at Supercuts is hella good. Not the, <laughs> not the, uh, the 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 lady with She's the eyes. Certified that, and everything. Right? No. Yeah, pre pretty yeah. sure they get most of their training from YouTube. Yeah. What's yeah. the what are those lizards that change uh, chameleon? Yeah. Yeah. That was the lady that cut my hair messed up that one time. She's a lizard. Oh no. She had the eye that went. Beer. Yeah. It was one the went this direction. way, one yeah. went that way, and then she was cutting my hair. And I'm like, that's probably not going to affect her hair ability. I'm sure I'm fine. <laughs> not at all. And uh, it yeah. did. It did affect her. <laughs> that's, but that's strange. No predators can get her from behind because uh, she's looking uh, in both directions. God. Good. So maybe she's going to trim it. No, that's not what I'm talking about. You guys even notice, huh? No, what'd you do? Yeah, it's right here. Look no. close. Look at that. You getting bigger right now? I still don't see. Are you any getting? Th you don't you see the it? extra. You don't yeah. see the extra. The extra uh, uh, half a quarter inch. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Am I ours? 
<laughs> you guys can't tell? No, what have you been doing? How the many cl- how many uh, rubber band bicep curls did you do before you came that, on the podcast? Dude, I did, uh, I've been doing occlusion. I haven't done a long time. Oh, you did uh, occlusion. Uh, uh, When's the last time you guys did occlusion training? Mm. When we talked about it on the show. Talked about I did, it. Yeah, I did it after we talked on the show. It was not that long like ago. Like one time. You got to yeah, do yeah, it. That. You got to do it consistently. You know, just like we did back in the day. I do it with my calves. I don't really, my arms are. You still do them? uh, No, I don't. When's the last time you worked out your calves? Honest. (sighs) Wow. (laughs) Long enough that it takes me a while. That's why you're still wearing pants. Yeah, Yeah, it's still winter, bro. Tumbleweed came through the. It doesn't matter. (laughs) Summer's not here yet. (laughs) Wow, wow. I hit my calves yeah. Yeah, twice this week. (laughs) That's it. I did standing calf raises with no weight and they got sore. I was like, whoa. Yeah. I just this looked is- at mine. I was like, oh. Shut yeah, up, Justin. Pretty good. Yeah, whatever, dude. I'm good. Yeah, if yeah. you were a girl, it wouldn't be good, though, huh? I get them no, chemicals. no. Yeah, you'd be walking around with tree stumps. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. It's not sexy. No, but the occlusion, it's, it's, it works, dude. Every time I do it, I'm always like, dang, this is pretty cool. Yeah. You know? I, I, I just use the knee wraps, and at the end of the workout, I do a few sets with you know <clears throat> light barbell and some close grip push-ups just to get a pump or whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, it's sure enough, it works every single time. You look amazing. Thank you very much. I, yeah, I, no, I, I, I really appreciate that. I didn't know I needed to do this here, too. I have to do this at home. <laughs> what? <laughs> Affirmation? Yeah. It's like, come on. Dude. <laughs> oh, you look so good today. <laughs> yeah. Like, come on, dude. It's exhausting. <laughs> yeah, <I mean. laughs> Fine. You look good, Sal. You know what? I, like, I, like, you just should know that. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you, you, are, you are fine. You are the chick of the group, dude. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Yeah. Uh, so that leads me to this uh, about getting back into your workouts. Um, I've been getting messages from people like, "How do I get back? What should I do?" I, I'm, you know, my gym's reopening or whatever. Obviously, they're not in California because California still nothing's open. <laughs> Uh, but other other states are opening up and stuff, and hmm. people are getting back into it. And this, the advice I'm telling them is this because I fall into this category also. Go easier than you think you should go. Yeah. Go e- go much easier than you think you should you should go. Because whatever you that think- That has to be a message right now. Whatever you think, when you get back, if you're taking a break, whatever you think is the right amount is almost always too much. Yeah. Well, I ch- I've challenged- You're going to overdo it. I've challenged a couple guys that uh, in you know on Instagram, we've been talking back and forth about this exact conversation. And I said, I know- that our map starter program looks like it's geared towards like the super basic or person who's like never trained before, but and it is for that person, but it also can be used by someone like you who's been lifting for four or five years, but you've been mm-hmm. off for two weeks, three weeks or more because you haven't been doing much or anything at all and watch what that program will do. And that's where you should probably start. And I know that's tough for us with our egos and yeah. to go, oh, I'm going to do, you know, physio ball exercises and, and light dumbbells. Like, why would I do that? But it's true, though. It's you don't, the right dose. You don't need to do much when you first yeah. get back. Well, that's the, the, I think the confusion is that, they, that we're saying you don't need to do much, and they're thinking, but if I do more, I'll get there faster. <laughs> yeah. That's not true. No. The right amount is the, is the amount that gets you there the fastest. Any more than that gets you there slower. Any less than that gets you there slower. And in my experience, okay, this is just in my experience training lots and lots of people and myself, the, the few times I've taken a long break or I've had clients taking a long break, you almost always overestimate, you know, how wh- where you should start. Like, oh, okay, so, you know, a month ago I was benching, you know, 175 for 10 reps. I'm going to do like si- seven reps or six reps and then I'll be fine. And then for three days afterwards, like they're sore, totally fried. Yeah. yeah. And that just slow down your 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 progress. Go easier than you think. Give yourself at least a couple weeks of that kind of gauge. Mm-hmm. And what you'll see is you'll see your body bounce back uh, very quickly. Well, the truth is if you've been doing nothing, okay, or little to nothing for two weeks or more, almost nothing will actually stimulate a response. Yeah, just a little more than that. Yeah, a yeah. set of something, all right? Of, uh, if you went through and really and, – and if you went through every muscle group and did one set of it, and that's more than what you did the previous two weeks of your training because you haven't been training at all. Mm-hmm. That will stimulate. Mm-hmm. It will get you. It will get you moving in the right direction, and it leaves you lots of room to build volume on top of that. Totally. Really hard for. Uh, I feel like when I when I communicate that to my female clients, they adhere to it really well. Yeah. Like if you you you, you like I, I don't know, and this is me talking shit about men, right? Like the, women just I don't know if they're smarter 
or what? When you you communicate that to them, they, they hear it, they go, "Oh, that makes no, sense." They just actually listen. Yeah, it's like, "Oh, right. that makes that yeah. makes sense." That's I'm, different. I'm going to do that, right? And then they they follow it and they see great results. You tell that to a guy, <laughs> pain in the ass. You tell that to a guy, and it's exactly right. what you said. Like, "Oh, okay, so no, if they, he say just I just need to do less, I'll just they do pretend more. to listen. They go, "Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I'll <laughs> totally do that. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, I'm not doing that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know." That's what's going on in their head. Dude, yeah. how many times has your wife blasted you for that? I get blasted <laughs> daily yeah, totally. for that. Yeah. You said you would. I, I did. I did. Oh, oh, man. I was just trying to get out of that conversation. Yeah. Why oh. did I not remember anything? I get better at this. I can't remember anything. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's true. It depends, though, Adam, on the situation. It, you're right. With men, that's the thing. Like you tell a guy, it's like telling a guy, hey, go lighter. You know, you don't have to go as heavy, that heavy. Go a little lighter, good form. Be like, yeah, yeah that's a good idea. Add weight. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see how heavy I can make this at. How many times have you trained a client like that? Were you doing like yeah. an incline press Dude, with like I dumbbells? Think I, I think I got this. Yeah. And you're yeah. watching them and you're like, this might actually be a little too heavy, right? And they put it down like, what do you think if we go up like a, uh, you think I can do the 45s? Yeah. Yeah. No. No, no you can't. We're, we're not there yet. No, no. You can't do the 45s no. at all. Uh. Anyway. Dude, I was, um, uh, you know, I've been DMing people and back and forth and people are talking about their own industries and how much they're being impacted and, I had a, a massage therapist contact me through DMs and talk about how bad their business is being hurt. Uh, Jiu-jitsu instructors in schools. Oh. You know, these are all close contact businesses. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then it made me think to myself, you know, you know, we all know what black markets are. People think black markets are drugs and guns and that kind of stuff. But that's just a type of a black market. Black markets, all they are, are markets that are not approved by the by government. That's all it is. Right. Yeah. So like in the Soviet Union, they had a vibrant black market for American tennis shoes and jeans yeah, and music and all that and stuff. Food, yeah. milk and meat and things like that. Like they had big black markets in the Soviet Union for that because it was so controlled that they you know that cuz markets will exist whether they're legal or not. There's right. A, if there's or an a hard- example is like what we see and still I think today is this way with like cigarettes in New York, right? Yes, yes, Because yes. they tax it so heavily that you go buy it somewhere else and then they sell it under the table. Right, because yeah. because markets will exist whether we like to well, like them or not if there's a high enough demand. If there's Like look at drugs, right? We That is the most regulated market uh, in the world in the sense that it's the most you know prohibited. Illegal, yeah, most yeah, illegal. Yeah, it's, it's super prohibited. You can land yourself in jail for life for just possessing a certain amount of certain drugs or whatever. And yet, the black market for drugs is a vibrant, uh, you know, billions and billions and billions of dollar market just in the U.S. alone, not even talking about the the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. What if these shutdowns and shelter at home and, I mean, L.A. just talked about how they're going to be shut down for three more months. It is. It's going to create black markets for normal shit. It already, I'm not going to sell people out at all, but I've already had multiple conversations of people. Mm -hmm. I know, I know quite a few. Yes, that are uh, definitely doing things right now. Cash wow. under the table. Yeah. Paying employees under the table, still servicing clients as if they were... And I'm not just talking about the fitness space. I'm yeah. talking about other spaces oh, too. Yep. Haircuts. Yes. Anything. Yes. Nail salons, haircuts. Yeah. That's all... It's all happening right Dude, now. Dude, how interesting. You know what I'm saying? Because like, think... Look at LA. You know, LA is... They, they said probably will be shut down for another three months. I think the unemployment rate in LA was like 50%, I just read, which is insane. Yeah. You can't tell me there aren't going to be... You know, people making tacos for people on the side, cutting hair, you know, gardeners, massage therapists showing up to people's houses. Yeah. There's going to be a huge, they're going to just make this huge black market explode. And then here's my fear when they reopen things, some of these people may be like, hey, cool. I'm going to keep doing it this way. Yeah. I'm making all this cash or whatever. Well, and not only that, well, but so I told you I was talking to Scott the other day and he was telling me the way that some of these rules are with the SBC loan, right? Oh, oh gosh. yeah. Yeah. Nothing like what everybody- I th- can't believe- Well, I can can believe it. Yeah. It's just no, like, like, oh, it's that, crazy. That, that to me is in, in, insane. So yeah. you have a lot of- Now I feel for the people- that are trying to do things legitimately and mm-hmm. they're saying, okay, like, yeah, but I know. they're getting I, screwed. And they're still getting screwed anyways with these loans because when they approve this stuff, there's 5,000 different lenders that are that are going through the loans. And the SBC tells the, the lender that they, it's off their rules. Mm-hmm. So the lenders now have the, what they want. And let's be honest, if you're lending money, you don't want it to be forgiven. No, you don't want you have to, stipulations. Yeah, I want my money back. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the banks nothing that are get, is free. Dude, people get it's so crazy to me. That people, oh, we're just getting this money. Like, yeah. oh, this is great. Everything we'll just get a loan, and everything's gonna be hunky dory. They're the ones determining all the rules. Well, you. listen to what Scott told me he has to do. So, 
he gets the, he was one of the people that was on the front end, got the loan right away, right? So one, he gets it and he has to pay it, uh, pay it out within I think two weeks and show that he's giving it to his he employees. Has to pay it all to them, to all to his employees, right? Right, like right away and show that it's it's keeping them afloat and giving them money, right? Well, here's the shitty part: he's got to pay all them that and they can't do work for him because they're closed down, right? But he gets to he has to pay them to help them out, right? Okay? Well, one. That screws them with the inability to get unemployment because they're getting that because they're getting that money. They don't get the unemployment. Then on top of that, they're not doing any technical work for him. He's just keeping the business afloat by being able to pay his employees. But then he has to pay taxes at the end of the year on that money. So yeah. he now has to pay taxes, and operating costs, and everything. Where's that going to go? It doesn't stop, yeah. right? And he has so he has to pay taxes on labor that he was given free money for to pay for that he didn't get. Does that make sense? Like he does they don't do any work for that money. Mm. And he has to pay that he's paying them that money and he has to pay them that money. Mm. Can't, he can't just put it away for a rainy day in case, you know, they need it as like a reserve fund. He's got to show that he's spending it on his people. Right. And every business has different needs. So to to give money and then to say you have to spend it like this, it's very inefficient. Yeah. Oh. Very, very inefficient. Oh, and and this is now, and, and then he, there's a payback structure, right? Where they have to pay back X amount of dollars. Yeah, I or, think he said like four grand, and it kicks in within sixty or ninety days afterwards, or something like that. So, yeah. well, see, the, here's the crappy part about all this: they didn't know this when they got the loan, right? And that, yeah. you know, he can't even give it back. Right. Oh yeah, that's right. They won't take it back, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, this is this is crazy. Well, it's, you know, it's, it smells of a racket. When this all went down, and they were talking about this emergency money that they were going to give to businesses. And they pushed it through really fast. Legislators are like, we need to do this right away. And by the way, when 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 the left and the right agree on something, that's when you should be careful. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. that usually means yeah, something, a little <laughs> something shitty is about to go down. Yeah, apprehensive. So they're like, we need to push this through. And so when they do that, they 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 spend very little time on how it's gonna work, what it's gonna look like. They just push it out. Then after the money's out, then they tend to go back and say, okay. Let's audit everybody. Which is such, Let's see what's which going is such on. bullshit because the only bit of dragging the feet that happened between the left and the right was like who who should get what money and what more, yeah. who gets more, and like oh they the, the the right or the left wanted more 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 money to go over here, the right wanted yeah. to go over here, but no one's talking about like is it going to be effective? Yeah. How are these people going <laughs> to Whoa. actually implement it? Like well, uh, well, terrible. Well, when does it stop? Where yeah, how do we cap this? Well, so I I mean I have friends that have been unemployed now for a little while and they haven't gotten any unemployment checks from California at all. My buddy got his like, first one. He did? How long is it how long to take him? Well, I mean, he just got it like literally two days ago. And I know what has this been sixty days since it's oh, been Oh yeah. Yeah. And California I think is fifty, if I'm not mistaken, fifty billion dollars uh over. Like their 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 uh, what 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 their what's it called? Their budget. Their budget. Mm -hmm. And so they're gonna ask for a federal bailout. But here's why they're under fire. They took hundred and twenty five million and gave it to undocumented workers in California. So they're 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 fifty billion over budget asking for bailout. Meanwhile, they gave one hundred and twenty five million. So you want to kill our actual economy uh, of businesses out there and give it to people who don't even aren't even legally doing. Now it. Ex yeah. explain to me how now how does that fly under Trump? Because there's no way Trump would let, allow that to happen. That's remember the states have a states certain have amount of power. Own, yeah, they have a certain amount of power. Federal government has a certain amount of power, and there's certain things that the states can do, and the government. I mean, the feds could come in and sue the state and try to, you know, good luck with that, right? So it's crazy, it's right? Just, it's a very weird world we're living in right now. Yeah, it's very, very strange. Well, I, I, I flip flop every day on like just how bad it is because you get, you read one article, you hear something from one person, and then the next day it's the opposite. Like I was telling you before we got on the podcast that. You know, strangely, there's this huge surge in e-commerce right now. Mm -hmm. You know, there's uh, so there's a well, lot. That of, makes sense, though. Yeah, you have the Twitters, the Facebooks, the Google people. They're all still making the same kind of money. They're all just working from home, and they're at home all day long mm. and bored. Yes. You know, you can't go out and visit people. You can't do anything. Can't go to the movies. Can't do shit to like fucking distract you. That's so why I can't get puzzles. So people, is our puzzles hard to get? Rid yeah, of? they're hard to get. Are you I, kidding me? Yeah. What do you, like, what do you mean? Like they're sold out? Yeah, there's the, all the ones I've looked at are sold out. I'm sure people like DM me some links for other ones, but I haven't found any that I liked. Yeah. Oh man, that's and puzzling. Like, <laughs> it's a puzzle. It's, it's, oh my yeah, god, it's it's bad dad. Sorry, uh, sorry about that. Nice. Boys. <laughs> anyway, crazy. So you guys want to hear something cool that I looked up the other day? Yeah, let's hear uh, it. Um, fetishes. <laughs> yeah, right. so it's a nice uh, turn, right? Yeah, you like Great. that? Excellent. No, there was this. Uh, there was this. This site that I bet those are through the roof, though, right now. Well, what uh, porn searches and stuff? Yeah. Oh, mm. yeah, through the roof, totally. Yeah. yeah, I know that the traffic on some of the top porn sites are through the roof, but there's a this this website that went through Google searches and whatever, mm. and looked up like the top searched fetishes per state. 
Yeah. And the oh, top yeah. and like the top search fetishes in, fetishes in the United States. So so here's a trippy thing. What so I'm going to go down the list. It's 1 2 3 4 What do you think the fifth most searched fetishes in the United States. The, what? Fi- the, the fi- fifth? Yeah, because the top- I, couldn't, I couldn't even give you the top four. Okay, well, uh, I'll, all right, fine. I'll go through the top, right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, give me a couple so I get an idea what they're. Yeah. What, what, what's, so, what? SM first, right? Right. Settle messagism. Of course. Uh, group sex, number two. Okay. Uh, just sadism, number three. Sports gear. Crush videos. Wait, Spo- oh, sports gear? Sports Face gear, it. number four. Oh. I don't understand. Okay, that. so now is this, is this all under. Under the umbrella of like pornography, or is it like any fetishes? Like somebody who just like like, like what is that? What what is that in in case? Like when you're looking at the list, is it all like related to porn? It's all related to sex. It's it's mm. sexual fetishes. Okay, that's what is sexual fetishes. Yeah, it's so not just fetishes. It's sexual fetishes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So sports gear number four. Sports gear. Like they're, they're huffing it. <laughs> no, what? bro. Don't you remember like uh, what? Remember oh. what do you mean? Huff- <laughs> I was thinking what are you like huffing? in the locker room. You know, like. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like that like, was Porky's. I disgusting. Think, right? yeah. <laughs> like it sweaty gear from yeah, like pro yeah, like athletes that aren't yeah. work, they're not working right now. Hey, I'm just saying some people like that. You, he might know. be right. I mean, if you're if you're an NFL player and you're not playing right now and you need some side yeah, cash, sell your jock straps. Yeah. Oh, that's and, hey. Remember, wasn't it know. Doug who told us that they had vending machines it's in big, it's big in Japan? In, in Japan, that would just that, yeah, yeah, panties, stink, stinky underwear. They were, yeah. No, they were just they were panties yeah. that were worn. Yeah, yeah worn panties. That's, that's gross too. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, maybe Justin's right. You're making fun of him right now, but he could be right. Maybe that's. I 100 percent think Justin's right. I 100 percent oh, people yeah. buy. I think people course. buy that shit. It's so weird. Well, I heard a new one. Uh, Duncan Trussell was on. Uh, Joe Rogan's podcast. He was talking about like people getting stuck in the mud as a fetish. What? Yeah, like you get stuck in the mud, and they're like, yeah, like like they get off on that what? for some reason because they're like, Why? I'm, I'm in the mud, I Dude, can't get out. Humans are <laughs> humans are weird. It's we're just so strange. We're so weird that we get into weird shit that now, doesn't do you, make any sense. Now, don't you don't you, see? It does though. Don't you? Don't do you guys subscribe to what like? Do you mean the, it makes sense. Well, I'm alluding to that. Let me finish okay. here. Don't do you guys subscribe to like the like Freudian theories that it's like some childhood thing that that was that causes something that happens to you? It's like, an imprint. Yeah, yeah it's an uh, imprint. That happened, like so. You, when they were kids, the first time they orgasmed, like, they were like, trapped in mud. No, like their, like their, <laughs> their parents were having a monster trip. Their parents show? were having yeah. sex in the mud while they were fucking sitting there playing with their toys or some shit. Oh, that's oh, what it wow. is, right? Isn't it? Isn't it something like that? Don't it you might you, do you not subscribe to those theories? It maybe, maybe I do. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's coming from somewhere. Something. It's yeah. got to come from somewhere. Well, here's number five: armpits. Uh, yeah. Apparently, <laughs> apparently, armpits is oh. a fetish. Number six: balloons. Oh, balloons? No, I hate, yeah. I hate balloons. Why don't, why don't you I like don't them? I don't know why I just don't like them. You actually yeah, don't I like them? I pop them right away. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that's a fetish. Yeah. So now, like, like, okay, now name a state, and I'll tell you one of the top fetishes in that well, state. Well, compared to that are, like, really different. Like, well, give, me, give me, like, a, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Texas versus California. Well, well, let let us guess. Like, you say the fetish, we'll try and guess the state. Well, so Alabama, I don't even know what this is. Yanni egg? I don't even know what that is. Y O N I. Egg? Yon- what is that? I don't know. Look that up, egg? Yeah, cool. yeah, Yanni egg? Yeah, Y-O-N-I and then egg. That's that's Alabama's fetish. I have no idea what that is. You know what I want to know? What? Yanni egg? What leads you to these types of articles? What? I'm looking for content for what? the show. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking for content for our fitness show, and you yeah. go like, I'm going to look up porn fetishes. I, no, you, know what I, you know what I Googled? Yeah. Am I normal? You know? <laughs> Am I normal? <laughs> oh, wow. I made the top 15 with my... That's a Yanni egg right there? Yeah. So what does it do? You Expl- put it, explain it. You put it inside your. Uh, oh, it's one of those. Oh. Is that one of the things that you you, you put inside her, and then you can control it's and a, vibrate? It's and a stuff? polished stone in the shape of an egg. Oh, no, it's not what inserted I into your vagina, oh. and they're believed to be Chinese in origin, used by concubines of the emperor for youth, sexual prowess, and vitality. What if it doesn't come out? Yeah, you know. You it's just a, put it in and then, whoa, whoa got to go to the doctor. It's yep. a big-ass egg. I would think you'd be able to get that out. <laughs> Maybe. Right? Like, I don't know. It's like people that put bottles up there and stuff like that. Like, they, wow. those come out. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's disgusting. All right, so California. Yanni, oh, that's a new one for me. So yeah. California's is wax play. What? Wax play. Is, is, is like a, like you're burning candles and like dripping it on your nipples. Apparently, and stuff. Yeah. so that's pretty specific. Yeah, that, I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah, I'm wow. just like you know, hypothetically. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they just, I like this game where it's been very revealing about <laughs> you guys right now. Keep going here. Let's hear. I just know. <laughs> so te- Texas is whipping. So that's for that's for uh, makes sense. Yeah, yeah, for Texas. Yeah, why does that make sense? Yeah, more? Nevada armpits. That's armpits comes from Nevada. Apparently, they're they're big into the armpits. I don't know what that is. That's freaky. New Hampshire sounding. 
What is sounding? Look up sounding fetish, oh. Doug. Is it, yeah, like when, when you're getting the BJ. Oh. Whoa. I'm just guessing. Yeah, Justin, knows like a, this is a, uh, yeah. Justin knows a lot. Yeah, a uh, lot coming out right now, guy. Yeah. Hey, I want to see what oh. sound. Uh-oh. What is it? Oh. What is oh, it, Doug? Doug, Doug wants to throw up over there. Pull it up. What no, are, are you going to make us get going to shock us? Don't put up images, though, Doug. Fuck, is it images? Sounding? No. What, what, is what, what is it? Would you put a rod down your penis for oh, sexual pleasure? Oh. That's, where is that? What state That's is that? That's called sounding. Oh, my God. That's okay. New Hampshire. I'm way off, and uh, no thank you. Wow. So I guess you put it in there, Ugh. and then they do they make it vibrate? So it does, it does that. I think it's just I going have in no there. no idea. No, sounding <laughs> means I think they make it vibrate. You know how you hit like a metal rod, and it goes boom. Wow. That's a terrible. Like in, uh, oh, in the pee hole. It, it just shows you how... how um, how big we are as a society that there's, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Dude. Like, like first of all, the guy who was the first guy that said, I'm going to try and stick this rod in my penis right. and vibrate it or get, put sound to it. Yeah. And, oh, wow, this feels good. Now let me share this with as many friends as I can and find- And then it becomes a thing then it becomes in a New thing. Hampshire. Yeah. Everybody searching. <laughs> they, all, they all move there. Wow. Have you guys tried this? Yeah. <laughs> no, like, dude. That's th It just sounds bad, though. I don't understand why somebody would even try that. Yeah, yeah. Doug's still looking at reading. I can see that. I, I can't read it. You know, honestly. I always, I always love when Doug pulls stuff up on the TV because it gives away because all the advertising that he gets hit. Like I always makes, I always go like, <laughs> yeah, why, like I, you see Juve, and then you see like uh, lingerie for plus sizes. Doug, what yeah, have you been, what have you been searching lately? I like that. That's, That's yeah. true. The ads do follow you. They don't do. They? Like, like yeah. see, their Organifi green juices on there. You've got the Juve light. So oh, that's good, Doug. That you're searching yeah. our brands. No, but then all of a sudden you have lingerie every, for those plus sizes. What's that yeah. all about? Everything in that one column is associated with the page I'm on. Everything on yeah. the far right is associated with me. Paleo sure. Valley. Uh, sure. Uh, sure. That's, what, sure. that's what we like to tell you. Just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doug, yeah. Doug's ordering plus size you lingerie. You make me look up this horrible thing like sounding, and next thing I know, I have all this weird stuff following me. <laughs> oh. oh, Doug. Yeah. Ah, it's flip it over, Doug. You. I don't want to see what the sounding is anymore. I it's, don't want yeah, to see yeah. it. It's funny how they use a banana to demonstrate this. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I got a uh, I got a new show I wanted to recommend to you guys. Have you ever watched what we do in the shadows, like the movie? It's no. it's with vampires. It's like total satire. It's hilarious. Um, anyways, they have a TV show like it's on uh, YouTube. It's a, it's another original, but uh, oh my god, it's so funny. There's this vampire on there too. So they try to like they their roommates or whatever, and it's um, basically one of them. They have it. They call him an energy vampire. So he's just like this this normal kind of bald guy with glasses, and he goes into like offices and stuff, and he just keep, he talks, and he's really boring, and people are around him like, oh yeah, and then you know you start getting like just drained because like <laughs> he's just stealing all your energy. <laughs> it's just I, the concept. It's so funny, dude. And he gets more powerful like the more uh, you know boring uh, you know he. Hey, he, you've been. Gets, I know people like that. Oh my god! You've been going down the, the YouTube rabbit hole. It sounds like like you've been watching a lot of the originals on there. That you finding good stuff. They're or? they're coming out with some good content, man. Like I like the only thing they had before that was the Cobra Kai series, yeah. which I, I loved that. But uh, yeah, between between this and then the AI one I, I recommended last time, like it's. Dude, they're they're starting to hit some 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 hits out there. Dude, I I know somebody like that uh, that we all know. I'm not gonna say any names, but that that uh, we talked to this person. This sucks. And they and they, and you know what what's supposed to take sixty seconds? Like it's a sixty second. You just gotta tell me. <laughs> I know. You gotta tell me yes. two sentences. Yes. I got what I got it. Let's do this. It's a forty-five minute conversation. It's so like, anyway, oh, hear me out, and then we're gonna do this, and we're gonna do that. And, you know, oh, and here's a graph, and then you yeah, know, yeah. cornflower blue, and blah, 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 yeah. you know, like and they just keep going, and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, <laughs> you know just, what I do? He's just getting powerful, and he starts floating, you know, because everybody's so fucking bored. You, you know what I've actually oh, done with it. people like that when they talk to me like that? I interrupt them and I say, so to make a long story short. I'll actually say that to them, so they can, or I'll pra paraphrase. That's yeah. where you need that music, you know. Remember the mm -hmm. da -da 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 -da, and then yeah. like a cane like pulls them off. Do you guys remember? Again, I'm not going to say names because people know who this person is. But do you remember that friend of ours that had that that like fitness business idea? <laughs> oh God! And Adam, Adam went to meet with him because he was going to present it to Adam. Yes. And Adam comes back, and I don't know how long you met with him for. And Adam goes three hours. Yeah. Three, oh, hours. three hours. It was three hours. That was longer than that. And, and it was, this was when we were all first getting together, right? So we were really kind of like learning each other. Yeah. And, I, and I go, fuck, maybe I'm the dumb one of the group. <laughs> and I need my partners to take a look at this because this is- like, I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's not registering for me. Yeah, so <laughs> you, you send Justin and I- and yeah. an hour and a half into the conversation, maybe they can figure it out. Yeah, yeah I'm sitting right? there. And I'm, I still have no idea what your 
pro product is. You're yeah. just talking about it, but Till I have this no day. Till this day. Yeah. I still don't I had to stop him and I said, listen, yeah. you probably have a good idea because mm -hmm. <laughs> you're a good guy. Probably not. I mean, and you got money. You work hard. Right? I said, but I if you're telling me and I'm in fitness and an hour later, I have no idea what it is. Yeah. You're not going to be able to sell it to anybody else. Yeah. That's the that's one of the biggest uh, mistakes people make is they can't. They have a product or something. And they can't explain it. You say, "So what does your what does your product do?" And it's like a 45 minute conversation. You should be able to tell people <laughs> in like a minute, yes. in less than a minute, exactly what it does. I think that elevator be, pitch. It'd be interesting to see the stats on that. Like, some, you think because you're in the space that you know best, but sometimes that you're you're your own worst enemy because of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you know too much. You know so much that you don't. Man, I just had we. I did that uh, that red dot uh, talk. And, you know, when I share, and I think this is, uh, this is the plus side of what's going on with COVID. And I, and I shared that. I said, you know, I don't want to be all doom and gloom because I started to talk about that, like how I think it's just going to forever change fitness and that it's, you know, a lot of these businesses are going to, you know, uh, go under and a lot of bad operators are going to be exposed. But the reality is I, I think a lot of fitness people have been speaking to the wrong audience for a long time. Mm -hmm. We knew this mm -hmm. when we came into this space. I thought, you know, this is, we're all fighting over the, all the people that already love coming to the gym. That's the, and we know that it's like less than 20% of the population. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're all fighting over this, the smaller piece of the pie yeah. and debating over who can help those people out the best. And I'm going over here going like, well, Fuck talking to those people. I'm not going to fight over those people. I'm going to go help all the other people yeah. that think this isn't for them because you guys have overcomplicated shit yep, so much. Yep, yep. That, they call that, Doug pulled it up, the curse of knowledge. When you know so much about yeah. something that you assume that the people you're talking to will know the basics of what you're talking about. Yeah. So you yeah. communicate a different You're level. in it every day too long to where like all those little details matter and like doesn't matter to your average person. No. Th so this is what I loved about personal training so much mm -hmm. and why I, I find so much value in it because- if I didn't train everyday people, it would be very easy for me to talk and assume people knew what I was talking about. Hey, you know when you do a, a backstep lunge, and and I'm assuming the person knows what a backstep lunge is. Or if I say the word resistance training, I'm assuming the person knows what resistance training means or tension or hypertrophy. How many times have you heard a fitness professional Use that. talk about hypertrophy yeah. to everyday people? It's like they have no idea what you're talking about. You have to speak at a much, much different level. Otherwise, you can't communicate your ideas effectively um, at all. I think that's a lot of that. It's ego, right? That's a lot of that is we compare ourselves to all the other professionals in our space. And, you know, you, you see this even at like the highest levels, like with the doctors and stuff. Like they 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 end up getting into these these conversations and it's like, wow, you know, you, the people that you're helping, like you're speaking so far over all of them. And yeah. if the desired outcome is to truly help the people, then maybe you would find a better way to communicate versus- well, some people get off on that. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Like, 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 you know, they're elitist about it. Like, oh, like they just want to maintain this upper echelon status over people. Oh, everybody else, like, you know, they'll, they'll come around, they'll figure it out. You know? Yeah, well, if your goal is to confuse people and make people think you know a lot of big words, then, you, then that's good. Right. Yeah. If your goal is to influence people and communicate your ideas then that's bad right yep. in order to in order to communicate effectively they have to understand that's like the rule number one you know how do you how do you communicate effectively rule number one they need to understand you yeah. <laughs> you know what i'm saying dude the, i mean they forget that though yeah, totally. yeah. there's this show a uh, new sh show on it's not a show it's like a documentary kind oh, of great on recommendation Netflix. from you yeah it, well it's about I uh wait. well <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> no, I, no, let's hear it. No, no, let's hear it. I like I'm the, sorry. I take first, it back, you don't yeah. notice the, the half a quarter inch I gain oh, on my arms. Oh. You make fun of my hair. You see? No, so this is, there's We're a- We're going to have to build them back up. There's a documentary on um, psychedelics, and they interview- mm. Did you see this? I, I saw the trailer, but is, did you actually watch it? I watched some of it, right? So they Sweet. interview celebrities, and the celebrities share their uh, psychedelic experiences, yeah. which I think is, first off, very interesting. Second off, as a father- I'm watching this, and as a dad, I'm like, this is coming across really pro taking these things. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Because you hear these celebrities tell these, these sure. glowing stories, and of course. was it Sting was on there, and he's like, even my really bad experiences were good. And I'm like, yeah. that's a terrible <laughs> yeah. that's a terrible way to communicate yeah. this. But did you guys know this? Is, so trip off this. Did you know that blind people, if they take LSD, can experience visual hallucinations? What? Yes. That's wild. Well, it come, obviously, it's coming from the brain, and it's a different place it's not coming from processing through the eyes obviously wow. so if they take lsd that just blew my mind they'll see visual hallucinations do they that. see like fractal geom geometric shapes and yeah stuff? it like, would be that it? they wouldn't see like actual visions no of they're not like they're not seeing yeah well, <laughs> well i'm just saying they never they've never saw in their mind they see is what so i mean guy. maybe 
I have no idea, but they do get visual hallucinations uh, when they take those substances. I want to. I, I want to know what they're reporting with that. Like what? What if they've never saw anything? What is it? Uh, you know, I, how would you explain it if yeah. you've never seen before? Maybe that's the future. I, that's that's too hard for me to comprehend. Isn't right that now. weird? Yeah, yeah. But they, you know, and then the way they talk about uh, psychedelics in this, um, you know, in this, and it, it also, you know, I, I, this is a subject that I get very interested in. Just the way that they affect the brain. And did you know that there's not a living thing that we haven't tested with, uh, like LSD, for example, that doesn't get affected by it? Give it to a fish, give it to a spider, give it to a, a dog, an ant, whatever. Every single living thing that, that we've tested I want to gets see a, a spider on LSD. Well, is it, isn't Have that- you seen? They, they do. They, they'll spin webs on LSD, and then they'll analyze the webs. Dude. Have you ever seen this? No, that's no. a thing? Yes. Is the, there like YouTube like that's an old. That's an old, uh, I think the first ones they did were in the 60s. Remember, the, the government had a lot some of- some pig. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, the government had a, a lot Charlotte's of Web reference. Yes, yes, was. Yeah. Wow, that was good. <laughs> that was good, Dad. Yeah, I know that was yeah, really good, I, right I, there. I I'm not yeah. even there yet. <laughs> what, what are some of the other words that he's put? Like it was like a spectacular or something. Yeah, like that. yeah. but uh, they they would have spiders. Bacon. And they, yeah. They'd put them on. They put them on LSD or they put them on other drugs, and then they would look at the spider webs. I bet Doug's pulling it up right was now. Was Charlotte's Web supposed to be high in that book? You know, all, all those children's stories they always have some like weird like underlining issue. Definitely Dumbo. If you guys go back and watch Dumbo, like there's a, a moment where they ate something and then they tripped balls. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dumbo, Alice in Wonderland. There's a lot of lot of kids. Pinocchio. Yeah, yeah. A lot, they have like drug references in them. I wonder that if was, Charlotte does Charlotte Doug, look that up. It, look it at may. Charlotte. Does, well, hold on. Look okay. at the web there. The top one, normal, and then LSD. Do you see the two? Wow. The bottom one's uh, marijuana. The bottom one's marijuana. You could tell okay. too. The bottom one got lazy. Yeah, it's totally. Like, <laughs> I didn't finish, <laughs> the, finish. Didn't finish yeah. the job. He, he did it at first, and he's like, "Ah, fuck wow, it." Wow, yeah, that, that looks like rays of like from a sun. Like, D- that's Doug, cool. look up Charlotte's Web. Uh, did do they do psychedelics in Charlotte's no, Web? No, just a dr- <laughs> drug underlining drug story or whatever. Like, see what? See Dru- what uh, yeah, drug references in children's, in children's cartoons. Stories. How about that? Yeah. Well, then you're gonna get all of them. I just want to see Charlotte's Web because now I'm you know, I'm curious. I don't think so. Mm. No, well, I don't think that they they referenced. Uh, I don't. Well, I wouldn't be surprised. But you you are right about Dumbo. They literally eat something and then trip. Yeah, yeah. balls. And then Alice in Wonderland, of course, that's a real. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of that stuff. There was a show in the '70s called H and R Puff and Stuff. Yes, that's a real show. Mm-hmm. So H R Puff and Stuff. H R stands for probably hand rolled, uh-huh. and it's this kid. This is a show for kids in this in this I think it was in the 70s. Wow. Okay. And it's this kid that gets a magic flute. Looks kind of like a pipe. Yep. He, Definitely a pipe. He, he plays it and then he goes to a land with yeah. with big, you know, nuggets of marijuana and mushrooms <laughs> without look hella high as hell. This was a kid's show. The cartoons were really? way, way cool. Right there, right there. Then. Look at this. H and R puffin stuff. You gotta pull up just just oh pull my up. god, that <laughs> that Muppet looking guy looks so high. Yeah, look at they give yeah, him yeah. like dark circles under his ass, <laughs> bro. He's no a total way. Guy. Yes, and the wow. way the kid goes to this magic land is by playing this flute. It looks like a pipe. He's like, hey man, follow me. Yeah, look at him. He yeah. looks like a total yeah. stoner. Yeah. Wow. This was an actual kid's show. Yeah. I feel like in those days the the writers and producers were like Oh yeah, they're like, let's see what we could do. Yeah, this will be funny. Yeah, dude, puff the magic dragon. I mean, that whole song. You is... would too, though, right? If you're like, if that's what you did for a living for like 20 years of your life, like write children's stories. You're like, you know what? Fuck it, let's have some fun with this. Dude. Yeah, that's, that's what I, I mean. The creativity, right? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. See, I get it. And it says it literally says they're tripping down psychedelic 60s. Oh, it's the 60s, 60s Saturday morning. So it was all about that. So yeah. funny. Well, that was a big part of the culture back then. Yep. So. Yeah. First question is from Chats with Gabby. How do you lose fat without losing muscle? I love this question because this is this should be your goal if you're trying to burn body fat. Your goal should not be lose body fat and then whatever else happens is all good. Yeah. Your goal should be lose body fat, preserve muscle, or in really, really perfect situations, gain muscle. Now, why why would you want that? If you keep your muscle, you're less likely to have the negative uh, metabolism adaptation. What I mean by that is when you when, when you lose weight and lose muscle, metabolism starts to slow down, which makes further weight loss or further fat loss more difficult. Mm-hmm. It also makes the fat loss that you did get more difficult to maintain. So you want to keep muscle because it keeps it helps promote a faster metabolism, which means you burn more calories 
all the time. And it's protective. I mean, like you get more strength from it, but it's it, they're they're finding through those studies too about you know the immune system and everything else, like how protective it is to to acquire more muscle tissue. Yep. This is this is also why it's very important that you you build the metabolism up right by increasing calories before you decide to go in a cut. Because if you get a client who is only eating. 1800 or 2000 calories and they have a long way to go fat loss wise and they come to you and they want to do that and then you you dramatically cut them to say and that's not dramatic if they're at 1800 1500 is not dramatic at all so you cut them down to 1500 or 1400 calories what ends up happening is sure they might lose body fat because but that's not enough calories to support the muscle that they need on their body mm -hmm. either so you end up losing both muscle and and body fat at the same time and then that's where you see someone who loses and I, this used to happen a lot i remember when I used to have the hydrostatic weight come to the gym all the time and we'd have them uh, do all of our clients that our, our trainers were training and you'd get uh, trainers and this it, it would happen a lot, especially when they're a newer trainer and they haven't learned this lesson yet. They'd have a client that they, you know, threw on cardio, cut their calories like crazy and, you know, they lost them 15, 20 pounds and so the client's celebrating, they're celebrating like they did a great job. Then they go do the hydrostatic way. And then the person comes back with a higher body fat percentage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they go, and, and, and they're, they're like, like, I lost weight. Yeah. And then the client's like, this has got to be wrong. The trainer's questioning if the hydrostatic way is co correct or not. No, it is. And that's what happens when you cut too hard and you're not at a good sustainable place calorie wise. You're not feeding the body enough nutrients to hang on to the muscle mass that you have. And you're t t telling the body to adapt to a lower coach. So it pairs down muscle. It says, okay, it's too expensive to keep this this muscle mass on on my body because they're feeding it so low of calories that yeah sure it does use and burn burn fat as fuel because you're not giving it very much fuel but then it also pairs down muscle because you're not feeding enough nutrients it's it's 100% your the reason why you lose muscle when you diet is because your body's purposely trying to slow down its metabolism it's purposely trying to run on less calories because you're feeding it less calories now this happens almost every time what i mean by that is Almost every time you cut your calories, your metabolism starts to try to slow down a little bit. It's a normal adaptation. Nothing necessarily uh, wrong with it. But again, if it happens too much, you put yourself in a, in a bad situation. Now, how do you prevent this from happening? Well, the number one thing you do is you lift weights. Mm -hmm. And you lift weights in ways that promote muscle growth and strength. So what I mean by that is you don't lift weights in ways to burn tons of calories so if I'm lifting weights and I'm just going doing you know tons of circuits and going from one exercise to the other because I'm just I want to burn body fat I just want to burn tons of calories, you are sending somewhat of a muscle building signal but not a super loud one. The best thing to do is to build muscle and build strength or try to while cutting your calories. Because what this does is it tells the body, okay, we're taking we're not getting enough calories. We need to burn fat for fuel. Wait, should we pare down muscle? No. We need this muscle because we're getting a strong signal from actions that we need muscle mm -hmm. and we need strength. By the way, studies are clear on this. When people diet without exercise, it's about half muscle that they lose. When they lose 10 pounds, it's usually around five pounds of muscle, five pounds of body fat. This is totally, this is exactly what will happen if you don't lift weights properly while you're cutting your calories. You know, this this question reminds me of uh, a great conversation that we had with our good buddy, Jason Phillips. In fact, this is when we really hit it off with him is when he did such a good job on that episode that we interviewed him of explaining this and and how common it is. Mm -hmm. And honestly, a lot of coaches uh, uh, aren't privy or aren't savvy to coach through this or know what to do. And that's one of the things I love about NCI is that this is one of the most important things that Jason tries to teach to all of his coaches underneath him. And when we had that episode with him, this was we went deep into this, this conversation. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening to this and you have more questions and you want more detail, refer back to that episode that we did with Jason Phillips and check out NCI because this is something that they speak to a lot and they help coaches and trainers figure this piece out, which I think was one of the more challenging things for me because most of my career, that's what I was teaching other trainers. Yeah. And then this is what would happen. They would, they would, they would cut their clients and then they would see the body fat percentage go up. And I'd have to constantly be reminding them mm -hmm. that, you know, you got to take this a lot, a, a lot slower, more methodical approach because, you know, now we have the tools to be able to, to, to check and pay mm -hmm. attention to that in the past, before all these tools existed, you would think that you were a successful trainer. Client lost 20 pounds. They came in. That's what they want to do. They want to lose 20 pounds. 
But if you made them fatter, you weren't that that was successful. Uh, and people yeah, that, that you doesn't need to constantly be in their ear reassuring them this is the right approach. And that doesn't it doesn't compute to the average person. We just talked about like learning to communicate this, right? Like you say that to an average person that wait a second, how can I lose twenty pounds on the scale but get fatter? Well, it's because you didn't technically add fat to the body. You you have a higher percentage of fat because you fat, lost muscle because you lost more muscle than you actually lost body right. fat. Right. So ten pounds of body fat on a one hundred pound person is ten percent body fat. Ten, you know, eight pounds of body fat on a you know seventy per pound person is a higher body fat percentage, even though there's still less, less fat because there's less uh, lean mass overall. Here's the second thing you need to do if you want to prevent losing muscle. Eat a high protein diet. So even though you're in a calorie deficit, you still want a a higher percentage of your calories coming from protein. Studies are consistent on this. A high protein diet reduces the amount of muscle that's lost in diet. Uh, and when you lift uh, when you when you diet and when you lift weights along with the high protein, then the odds are higher that you might actually even build muscle. So number one, lift weights to build muscle, build strength while you're on your calorie deficit. Number two eat a high protein diet. That'll help a lot. And here's number three. I don't think it's a good idea to go too extreme in, in fat or carb cutting. In my experience, flattening out carbs, going zero carbs, unless it's helping you health wise and you have food intolerance, stuff like that, going too low of carbs, in my experience with clients, over time starts to reduce the ability of, to build muscle, even preserve muscle. Now, studies aren't clear on this. They don't necessarily support this. This is just my own personal experience. I don't have anything wrong with low carb diets necessarily, but if they're too low for too long, I have yeah. seen people start to lose muscle. Well, and the behavior of that too, when you go reintroduce them and how like excessive it gets after that. Mm -hmm. So, Next question is from Cams. I've been looking into a second source of income and nutrition has been a heavy interest of mine the last couple of years. Are there any online programs you guys know of that are credible. Oh, we just mentioned it in the Adam mentioned it briefly in the that last question we just answered. Um, NCI is one of our favorite online uh, certification courses run by Jason Phillips. The reason why we like them is because, of course, their information is accurate. Uh, but more than that, they actually teach you how to coach uh, clients online. They teach you the process of coaching, how to help them with nutrition. So. One of the big, uh, I guess, one of the big problems I would say with online coaching, besides people who are not qualified, let's forget that, that's obvious, is that you have people who understand nutrition, they just don't know how to coach yeah. nutrition. The, the, they can't speak to the behaviors as much. And I, I think that you can have all the, all the book knowledge and all, you know, all, like everything from nutrition, like your background could be, you know, like a degree in nutrition, but it's going to be nil unless you're able to communicate all that and be able to convey that to your clients. Well, they're, they're huge on application. This is what, uh, again, this is one of the things that I really liked about Jason when we first met, like, you know, there's, there's certifications out there like Pers Precision Nutrition, which is probably one of the most famous, right? They, they, they deal with a lot of pro, uh, pro teams and uh, probably the most profitable uh, nutrition co uh, coaching out there. And that was his, his kind of direct competitor is him. And he, there's no knock on them whatsoever. The, the information, the science that's behind Precision is so, so good. The problem and the knock that, they, that he had on it and a lot of coaches do is – they get all this overwhelming information and all this great science and all the studies to support all this stuff, but then they don't know how to communicate that and then apply it to a client. That's Jason picked up where I think they left off. And he said, listen, this is where mm -hmm. he says, I see there's a huge disconnect from these people that go through this great certification, learn all this knowledge, but then don't know how to, to apply it to real life clients. And that's where he focuses a lot more of that is like, not only does he support and share the science, but then he also says, okay, now, now that you understand what the studies say and support a lot of like what we're talking about right now, now let's talk about, okay, you get this type of a client who comes in. How do you handle that? How do you now yep. start to, to, to deal with that? This issue? was a conversation I had with trainers all the time. It's like, I don't care how much, you know, I really don't care how much, you know, yeah. what I care about is how effective you are at helping your clients change behaviors long-term <laughs> and the positive. That's really the only thing that matters. Your knowledge is what drives what you do. But if you can't influence your clients, if you can't train them or coach them effectively, all that knowledge doesn't mean anything. Now, that being said, I will say this. I do think, I don't think with the current situation that's happening right now that, that the market for fitness and health 
is going to go down. I think the market's still going to stay strong. I think where people go have fitness, where they look for coaches, where mm -hmm. they look for trainers is going to change. The market's going to look different, but there still is a market demand for coaches and trainers. And so I think you're going to see a potential surge in online coaching, in particular online nutrition coaching. I just see, I see that start growing. So do I do I think this is a, a good potential source second source of income? I do. You got to do a good mm -hmm. job, of course, but I I definitely do. And again, I think it's going to grow. I mean, what do you guys think about that? I agree. Yeah, I definitely think that. I mean, you've seen that with Zoom calls and the way people are meeting. It's all virtual now. So I, I mean, that's a pretty pretty seamless uh, transition. I would I would think for somebody to even even you know even personal like training coaching. I think is going to be a lot more visible online. You know, going forward. All right. Our next question is from Catherine B. Fit. I know the difference between flexibility and mobility, but what are the differences between flexibility and mobility drills? Okay. So flex it. They, they say they know the difference. If you know the difference, then you'll know the difference between the drills. Okay. Mm -hmm. So flexibility is just range of motion. How far you can take a muscle through its full range of motion. Like how much, how Passive far- Passive versus active. Right, so how far can I can I touch my toes? How much can I stretch my hamstrings? Mobility is control and stability within a range of motion, okay? So just because I have the flexibility to do the splits doesn't mean I have the mobility within the splits, okay? A good example of this is a baby. You take a baby, Babies are very flexible. You can take their little legs and bend them back, and they often will suck on their toes and do you know whatever. But they have very poor I wish I could do that. mobility in the sense they don't have that stability and strength. That's, Another fetish. That's <laughs> oh. man. I'm really revealing myself. Yeah, drip that wax on my nipples while I suck my toes. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, nasty. so much being revealed about you today, I know. guy. I know. Hey, you know, it's I just wear it. The yellow <laughs> yeah. toe. No, so it's uh, so flexibility is just that range of motion. So the drills. Uh, of course, are going to be geared towards both of those. So what are flexibility drills? Static stretching. Yep. Static stretching would be a flexibility drill. I'm mm -hmm. just looking to increase my range of motion. What does a mobility drill look like? Mobility is connecting. through. It's, it's tension. It's connecting through those ranges of motion. So like we have our MAPS Prime webinar coming up, which is free, and, and, and Justin actually teaches that class, teaches you how to prime your body, does a self-assessment. In that webinar, in that class – you are going to experience what it means to connect rather than just stretch. Mm -hmm. Totally different, totally different level of effort, but the results are, look, flexibility is, flexibility can mean you're in unstable. Mobility means you're stable. So it's, there's not even a competition between the two. What you want is mobility. Flexibility can lead to improved mobility if you do the right stuff with it. But on its own, it can yeah, lead to it's a different mentality. And I kind of mentioned like passive versus active. So yeah. like if you've been in certain types of yoga uh, classes where they're trying to get you to really relax and breathe and calm your system and like, you know, uh, uh, find yourself into these positions by relaxing the central nervous system. It's a totally different technique than, you know, mobility where I'm really trying to gain access to where I'm squeezing my muscles and some of uh, basically I'm trying to create lift. So if I'm trying to lift my arm trying to lift my legs but i'm not i'm just squeezing my muscles to to act as if i'm about to move and so that i have access to that now so if i were to get in that situation and be in that position with my body i have the strength to dig my way out well another example and referring to the the webinar that you did that you know goes out goes live on saturday is uh, the windmill, right? So uh, we're all, if you've played sports, um, and even if you haven't played sports, everyone has seen the, remember in PE at school, to cross your leg, hang over, and stretch your hamstring. Mm -hmm. Right. Like that, you, that it would be a static, like Justin's talking about, where you're, you're working on flexibility. You just hang over there for 30 seconds and you stretch the hamstrings. A mobility drill that's going to help with not only flexibility, but also strength and control, a mobility drill would be like the windmill. So the windmill is going to gain the same access that you're you're talking about with like the hanging hanging over stretch, but then you also get strength and control through the full range of motion. So Justin teaches, you know, the windmill and how to break that down with Doug on Saturday. But then it, that's the real ex difference. Like that ex that would be an exercise that is a mobility drill versus just crossing your leg over and hanging and stretching. So I think I have an analogy hanging uh, hanging there with me. I think this will work. But do you guys remember walkie talkies back in the day? Yeah. Okay. So if you don't know what a walkie talkie is and you're listening, which you might oh, actually not know what that over. is. This was before cell phones, and they were things you would talk into. They have an antenna, 
and if there's certain distance apart you'd be able to communicate with your friends and they're super fun so you'd and there's expensive ones that the military would use where they would actually go miles yeah you know, mile or two miles away where i could like a cell phone except it's not pinging off I think cell phone metro time. even had that as an option yeah, yeah. like at a button on your cell phone yeah. you could do that yeah, yeah so walkie talkies i talk in one end my voice comes out in the other and then we'd have to be a certain distance apart okay so once you move outside that distance, the walkie-talkies can't reach each other, and I can't communicate with my friend. When you stretch past a certain point, your central nervous system can't connect to the muscle. It's off. There's no control and stability. Mm. So imagine if you have these two walkie-talkies. I move them apart, move them apart. Uh-oh, I can't hear Adam anymore on the other end. So now what I do is I push a button that sends a stronger signal to establish a new connection. Now I can talk to him at this distance. Now we move further apart. Uh oh, we lost connection again. Send a stronger signal, establish a connection. Hmm. This is what you're doing with mobility. You're working in new ranges of motion where you don't have control and, and stability, but the way you gain that control and that stability is by connecting. You have to connect with your central nervous system. Then when you do this enough times, you establish a solid connection. Now you've gained mobility that's the big difference hmm interesting i like that well, yeah a little bit almost yeah. ramp water there but it, you no, you, he dug his way out yeah right? like you could kind of hear your friend but then you know it becomes clear later and that was when, nextel not metro it was nextel yeah yep. damn it <laughs> next question is from griff 378 when taking a protein shake before bed do you think casein really provides more benefits due to its slow, slower digestion rate than whey? This is funny. This yeah. I felt like we used to talk about marketing. Well, yeah. we used to talk a lot about questions. Like we, yeah. we don't normally pick these yeah. questions anymore, so it's good that you brought it back up because uh, I, I felt like we beat it to death uh, early on. Uh, like four years ago. Yeah. A long well, time. so so here, so here, so I used to do this when I was a kid. Oh, so did I. When I was a kid, I was I need oh I need to have all the protein in the world, mm -hmm. and I would have a shake right before bed. I'd actually set an alarm to wake me up so I could wake up in the middle of the night and drink a shake. And okay, so let's forget the casein versus whey debate here for a second for before bed. I'm going to ask a question: Do you think sleep plays a role in muscle building? Okay, the answer to that is yes. Sleep plays a very important role in muscle building. In fact, if you don't have optimal sleep, you will not build uh, muscle in the optimal way. It's just a fact. Sleep is very, very important for overall health, but it's also important for the muscle building process. Okay, we have a circadian rhythm that our body has a circadian rhythm, and it uses various signals to tell us when it's time to fall asleep. One of them is light. If you are in bright lights right up until you go to bed, it might take your brain about an hour to register that the lights are out, and now we can start to sleep. So studies show that when people turn out the lights an hour before bed, that they get better sleep than if they're in bright lights. And this is because we evolved this way, right? The sun comes down, less and less sunlight. Eventually, it's dark. The brain is now prepared. We go and get really, really good recuperative sleep. But there are circadian rhythms in other parts or other signals that, that tell the circadian rhythm if it's time to go to bed or not in other parts of the body. One of them is your digestive system. If I eat food, that digestive process tells my body, believe it or not, it's time to be awake. It's not time to go to sleep. So we're, it's, this is like one of those things where we're, we're like uh, cutting our nose off to spite our face. I need protein to build muscle, so I'm going to interrupt the one of the most important things that I, should, I, I could be doing to build muscle, which is get good sleep. Yeah. So taking a shake or eating right before bed is not a good idea in terms of having good sleep, which then contributes it's just to not muscle ideal. growth. I wouldn't, not I wouldn't, ideal. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's not because here's the thing too, because the, the argument or devil's advocate with that is, oh, okay, well, if somebody is not hitting their calorie intake or not hitting their protein intake before bed, I would advise to have that, right? If you were, uh, if you were very, if you were, uh, let's say you're a 200 pound male trying to build muscle and man, you just had a hundred, hundred gram protein day. And it's, should I take, Sal said, don't, you, it's not ideal to take a shake at 10 o'clock before bed. Well, that person is so low on their protein intake, the benefits that you'll get by adding that probably trump. Maybe. May, yeah, yeah, maybe. You're maybe, right. I mean, another 30, 40 grams of protein that then will interrupt sleep and prevent, mm. you know, the, the, it may be, it may be negligible. It may be, it may, yeah. it may be negligible, mm -hmm. right? But so, it, so I don't think it's, it's necessarily uh, fair to say it's like a bad idea to eat at night. It's just, this this question it screams like splitting hairs doesn't matter waste of time like even discussing it and worrying about it it's just it's purely a another 
uh, marketing ploy that supplement companies have done a great job. It's just what we do, what we tend to do is we tend to eliminate the value of everything else we do, mm -hmm. and we only value lifting weights and taking in protein. And so if it interrupts sleep, that's okay. It's like, oh, yeah. oh my God, if I, if I go to bed right now, I'm only going to get – seven hours of sleep, but I need to lift weights. So I guess I'll get four hours of sleep so I can get a really hard workout. Mm -hmm. You just killed yourself. You know, yes, you're lifting weights, build muscle. You robbed Peter to pay Paul. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, so no, the, okay. The idea is not to have food right before you go to bed. You should have your last meal at least two hours before you go to bed. It makes a big difference. Studies support this. Okay. But let's, let's forget all that for a second. The question is, is casing better than whey because it digests more slowly when you go to sleep? No, no, it's st stupid. That's a dumb. Yes, it does digest slower, but that's not going to. It's not going to make a big difference just because you're not eating. Throughout I mean, the night. when it comes to building muscle, there's already been plenty of studies that support that nothing is better than whey, right? Whey Isn't is it? the best. Protein. Whey is the best. Right? If you're going to you take a protein, it is right. the way. If you can handle it and you don't have <laughs> digestive issues with it, like someone like you. You know, nothing is more superior than a whey protein. Right, right. And in terms of like, uh oh, I'm not going to have food for eight hours because I'm sleeping. That means I need to have amino acids trickling into my bloodstream to build muscle because if I don't have protein all the time, I'll lose muscle. False. Yeah. You can fast during the day for six hours and not lose any muscle. You can fast for 24 hours mm -hmm. and not lose any muscle. So this is all 100% protein powder marketing where they got you to buy whey, yeah. they closed you on whey. Now they're like, wait a minute, how do we get, how do we, because yeah. when you get milk, by the way, milk is whey and casein. So they take the whey off the milk and now you're buying all that. And they're like, what do we do with this extra protein? How are we going to spin this? Oh, I know. Casein digests slower. Oh, right before bed. And it's ritualized. It's before bed. So now you can take it right before bed. Yeah. We know you're going to use it all the time. I fell for this. Yeah. I had whey protein for my workouts, yeah. casein for pre, for before bed. And then collagen. And then, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then throw that you in can, there. Yeah. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our guides, resources, and books. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal, Justin at Mind Pump Justin, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and Doug, the producer, at Mind Pump Doug. Gooad.